Hey everyone, Martin here at Orange Box Photography and welcome to the channel. So today I wanted to do the follow on from last week's video which was part one on aperture priority. Um, there was a foundation to that which was understanding the exposure triangle. Um, I'll pop a link up to both videos up here and you can by all means go and check them out first. Now today's video we are going to be looking at the other semi-automatic mode on your camera's mode dial which is uh, the shutter priority mode. Um, on a Canon camera that's going to be yeah, TV which stands for time value which is the same thing and Nikon and other manufacturers just use S which is for shutter priority. Now the shutter priority mode is a really useful mode if you're trying to sort of achieve a certain type of look with your images. Um, so if, if basically the shutter priority mode you control the shutter how fast or how slow that shutter opens and closes to expose your image and then the camera kind of works out what the aperture should be um, for the given shutter speed you're trying to get. So for example if you're trying to freeze action you'd use a really fast shutter speed say one one thousandth of a second to kind of freeze motion of something that's moving fast. However this isn't always the ideal thing because sometimes you want to use motion blur to kind of you know accentuate what the you know the picture you're trying to do is doing. And as an example if you're shooting a moving car you don't want to freeze the action because it'll just make the car look as if it's parked. So really with a moving car, for example, you'd want a slow shutter speed to create some motion blur to give a sense that the car is actually moving. And you can use that along with panning to give it even more motion blur, but we'll cover that in later videos. So just to illustrate shutter speed, in these three images, they're all shot at different shutter speeds using shutter priority. Um, just to illustrate how each one uh, shows and affects your image you're trying to take. So if you look at this first one, uh, we'll shot at one one thousandth of a second. Um, it's frozen the motion of the spinning windmill. And this kind of shutter speed is going to be really useful you know, if you're you know, taking pictures of wildlife, um, you're trying to freeze motion of a fast moving animal, or even if you're just taking pictures of you know, rugby, football game, soccer game, whatever it happens to be, and you want to freeze that action, mid-action, then something at such a high shutter speed is going to nail it for you. Now the second image here, um, shot at a slightly slower shutter speed, and this is just starting to introduce a little bit of motion blur. You can still make out the individual blades of the windmill, um, but this is sort of starting to give you an idea of motion blur and that the windmill is actually spinning. Now the third and final image, um, this was shot at 1 30th of a second, and at 1 30th of a second you can see it's completely you know, showing motion in the actual windmill uh, and almost blurred out to a complete circle. Now you can use a combination of any of these sort of three sort of shutter speeds and um, depending on the image you're trying to achieve because you can actually achieve a bit of the first one and a bit of the last one. If you're trying to shoot a moving car and you choose a shutter speed say 1 30th of a second but whilst you're sort of uh, shooting the car, pan along with the car, it'll keep the car for example in perfect focus but everything else showing motion blur and this will give uh, you know the, the the feeling of speed and movement in the image and um, so this is just something I thought I'd show you just to give you a better understanding of shutter speed right so the next thing I'm going to do grab your camera and uh, for this I'm going to use my D7000 and um, just because it has the mode dial on the top I don't have that on the D700 so I'm going to use this just for uh, purposes I will keep some graphics in the corner here so you can see what I'm doing on this camera um, so what we're going to do is put the cameras into the shutter priority mode. Now remember, shutter priority on a Canon is TV or time value mode. Pretty much every other manufacturer just uses S for shutter priority. So if you grab your mode dial, um, flick that round until you're on S or TV, depending on your camera. Um, and then what we'll have a look at here, and I'll pop it on the screen here so you can have a look. As you flick through, on, on the D7000 it's the rear thumb dial to change the shutter. Obviously your camera may be slightly different, but um, hopefully you'll, you'll know which it is. Um, but if you flick through, what you'll find is as you start increasing the shutter speed on your camera, and as you slowly cycle through, the faster the shutter speed gets, the smaller the F number, or the larger the aperture is in your lens. Um, and this could cause you problems, the reason being is that, say you want to shoot something at one one thousandth of a second. So you select it one one thousandth of a second, um, and then your camera tells you that it needs to shoot it at 2.8 to achieve that shutter speed with the given light that you've got uh, in your scene. And that may cause you problems because if you don't want a very shallow depth of field, at 2.8 that's what you're going to get. And that could be a problem because you're only going to get that very, very shallow depth of field. Now, if you've seen my video on exposure triangle, you'll know there is one other thing that you can do to compensate that. 
and that is your ISO because what you can do is if you change your ISO on your camera so if you sit here and change your ISO as you start increasing your ISO what you'll notice is that uh, the aperture starts getting smaller um, so giving you a larger f number which in effect is going to give you a, a deeper depth of field but still keeping your shutter speed at the speed that you want and um, so don't forget um, that ISO is still there and you can still use it but don't push it too far because if you push that ISO too far again you're going to introduce noise grain and artifacts and things like that in your camera um, you know on the higher end bodies you know like D7000 you know really really good you know you can push the ISO quite far and still keep reasonable images um, but on the lower end bodies you need to be careful with that because it can introduce noise and grain quite rapidly into your pictures um, but uh, that's the shutter priority mode itself so that's uh, the video on shutter priority mode um, just to recap obviously remember if you're trying to freeze action and um, you really need a fast shutter speed one one thousandth of a second or if you're trying to be more artistic and create motion blur obviously you need a slower shutter speed um, don't forget you've got the ISO to play with as well um, you know it is an integral part of the exposure triangle definitely check that video out if you haven't seen it um, you know it'll give you a good grounding for uh, you know future videos that I do and also just helping you understand the basics of using your DSLR um, but that's it for now if anybody has any questions um, please feel free comment below um, you can drop me an email as well I'll, I will answer any emails that you send in uh, and you can email me at orangebox 321 at gmail.com and um, that's it for now guys you guys take care and um, see you later bye bye